need truth and life. Here is the Brother Leon Show. You better recognize. What's going on, listeners? This is your boy, Brother Leon. And you are tuning into another episode of the Brother Leon Show. I just want to say, welcome back. Let's do this. So, yeah, we are going to be starting on our new season. And one thing that I want you guys to understand is this, is that this season is going to be a season that is different from any other season. And that's the God knows truth. So, yeah, some of you guys are going to think I done lost my mind. Some of you guys are going to think that I done compromised the gospel and everything. But no, is that the purpose of the Brother Leon show is for us to come into truth. And so every voice has significance. And so the guests that I'm going to be lining up and the people that are going to be coming on are going to be from different walks and aspects of life. And so we are going to explore African spirituality. We're going to explore a whole plethora of things. Relationships, God, the Bible, the questions about God, because today I'm starting off season three with a subject that I put on TikTok. And I want you guys to listen to this. Hey, what's going on, TikTok? It's your boy, Brother Leon. I want to talk to you this morning about scarvation because the crazy thing is, is that a lot of times certain preachers, they will scare you to the altar. They will scare you that something bad is going to happen to you as soon as you get out them church doors. If you don't come and make Jesus Lord of your life. And the crazy thing is, is that once you get inside of Christ or once you get saved, then it's always going to be about fear because fear was the thing that brought you to God. It wasn't God's love. It was fear, fear that something was going to happen, that you was going to die without a savior, that you were going to die and go to hell. And as soon as you get in salvation, now all of a sudden, now you're being taught about demon spirits and you're still hell scared and you very rarely get the love of God because the one question that I have for Christians please pastors anybody Bible scholars explain this to me I am we have seen God smoke people there was a guy that touched the ark because the ark was getting ready to fall over he was just trying to save it from falling immediately he was smoked dead So my question is, if God can smote a man for trying to help save the Ark of the Covenant, how come God can't smote the devil? Because the crazy thing about it, and this is why I believe that all of this thing is energy, is because, number one, when you look at the story of how Satan fell, Jesus even said, I saw Satan fall as lightning from heaven. And the crazy thing is that he's been around here for years. And when you look at the book of Revelation, He will go to hell, but he will be let out. But there is never a time where God is going to utterly destroy our greatest enemy and foe. But we have seen God smoke many men. But my question is, our deadliest foe, why not that? And that's why I'm starting to believe that this whole thing is called scarvation. Because at the end of the day, if it was salvation, the one that's coming against me the most should be dead. Because we done fought. But the question is, how come he's still here? And so this is why I believe that it's energy and that you as a person are a vessel. And so you have to ask yourself, what type of vessel do you want to be? One that's full of fear, one that is your salvation is based off of fear or one that's free. Because they will give you religion to control you, but they will never give you truth to free you. And when you ask questions like the one I just asked, And the one I'm going to ask right now, what would the Christian be without hell or the devil? Everybody is crickets because this system is about control. And so you have to ask yourself, does it suit us? Peace. Yo, so that's what I put on TikTok today. And so the one thing that I want to talk about is this. What would the Christian be without hell or the devil or the fear that they experience 
in their Christian faith Because a lot of people are afraid They are afraid of Missing God They're afraid of deception When they ask questions So they're afraid of Am I being deceived? Am I being led astray? They're also afraid Of the devil The devil showing up Being possessed by demons Going to hell Generational curses And the crazy thing about it is that You hardly ever hear about the love of God But it does say And I'm going to give you scripture 2 Timothy 1 and 7 For God has not given us a spirit of fear But of power and of love and of a sound mind Your mind is not sound When you think That every move you make That you're going to go to hell That you're not pleasing God That you're not pleasing your pastor That you're not doing enough in church That you're not worshiping enough in church And then the crazy thing about it is that We are so extra We are so extra Thinking that we are pleasing God And the crazy thing about it is that You don't even know if you are pleasing God being that extra You don't even know if you are pleasing God being afraid And so your whole salvation experience Is based off of fear And at the end of the day Your salvation is more or less like a burden And even though we are supposed to take up our cross And follow Christ We have forgotten about the love We have forgotten about how it says in the scripture That perfect love cast out all fear That faith worketh by love And so man we go to church And we hear about this devil and that demon And we hear all these spiritual warfare testimonies Because there's always something on the inside of us There's something always on the inside of us That gravitates to that We gravitate to the supernatural We gravitate to the prophetic We gravitate to seeing all all types of stuff Miracles Healings Words of knowledge Because we want to make sure that this thing works. But the one thing I want to tell you is this. Is that whatever you give yourself to, you will see the manifestation of it. Whether it be good or bad. Because the one thing I want to tell you is that life is about consequence. And consequence is the payment for your action. That's the God knows truth. I remember a teacher told me this He said yo You either gonna pay me now You gonna pay me later But you gonna pay me And that's how consequence is You gonna pay for it now Or you gonna pay for it later But you gonna pay consequence The consequence Of allowing God To get on the inside of you That energy The consequence Of allowing Satan To get on the inside of you And that energy And so this is the reason why I am telling you That there has to be permission for everything The Bible is symbolic And it gives you illustrations Is there an order to the spirit realm? Yes, because I believe that the spirit realm Is made up of energies One form of energy Versus another form of energy A greater form and a lesser form But they are all energies And when you look at the Bible You're not going to see God being created He just is And you're not going to see the devil being destroyed Because he is And that was one form of energy Transformed into something else Because when you begin to see The contrast between Lucifer and Satan That is one form of energy Being transferred and transformed Into another one Because he was transferred out of heaven And transferred to the earth Because Jesus even said I saw Satan fall like lightning out of heaven And so you got to begin to take note of that You have to begin to take note Of everybody in the Old Testament That got smoked by God God ain't got a problem smoking people Seriously When you look at Uzzah Uzzah, David went to go get the ark 
And they drove it on a new cart. They drove it on a new cart. That's what the scripture says. I'm paraphrasing it. And so the ox tripped a little bit and the ark was getting ready to fall. And Uzzah stuck out his hand to keep the ark from falling. And immediately he died. Immediately. Smoked just like that. But the question that I have is if God can smote a man like that for trying to keep the ark from falling. And if we are going to have salvation. Where's the salvation from our greatest enemy and foe? He has not. God has not smote the enemy. He has not smote Satan. But we as Christians are here to fight against him and his legions of devils and demons. With spiritual concepts, spiritual warfare. But at the end of the day, you don't see God throughout scripture ultimately taking him off the board. You don't see it. You see him put in the lake of fire. But there is no place where you see the demise of Satan. And even when he does get into hell in the book of Revelation, he will be let out for a season for his ultimate defeat. And so at the end of the day, this is the reason why I believe that this is energy. And that you as a person have to begin to make sure that you're not following this system based off of fear. Because fear is energy. Whether it's godly fear, that fear of reverence, or that fear of like, yo, I'm, going, I'm only going to do this because I'm afraid God going to get me. And you're being hostage. You're being held like a hostage in a belief system. Because hostages do what their captors say. And so you have to ask yourself, is God holding me hostage? Or do I have free will? And I want to take it on the flip side. When you look at the man that was possessed with the devils, they couldn't kill him. But the one thing I'm going to tell you about spiritual energies, spiritual beings, whether they be angels, demon spirits, they need expression. The Holy Spirit dwells on the inside of you as a Christian to give you expression. What is that expression? The fruit of the Spirit. When you have the energy or the spirit of the devil, what is that? That is energy. And that needs expression. So this is the reason why I'm telling you that you are a conduit and that you are a vessel. I'm going to give you 2 Timothy chapter 2. Verse 20 to 21 But in the great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver But also of wood and of earth And some to honor and some to dishonor If a man therefore purge himself from these He shall be a vessel unto honor Sanctified and meet for the master's use And prepared unto every good work So that is giving you the criteria of how you may be used and be a vessel for God. So I'm going to tell you right now. If you can be a vessel for God, you can be a vessel of the devil. And this is the reason why I'm telling you that you are a conduit. That you are a vessel. You can serve as a conduit by ministry, whether it be good or bad. Because trust and believe, there are some people that are sent to give you bad ministry. Ministry is service. Ministry is teaching. Ministry is coaching. There are some people that are sent to be bad mentors, bad teachers, to lead you astray, to lead you off track. Don't ever think that when you hear spiritual terms and spiritual and church language that nobody outside of it knows how to utilize it. This is why so many Christian people get deceived. But the one thing I'm going to tell you is that they will give you religion to control you, but they will never give you truth to free you. What is the truth? Look at scripture and begin to ask questions. What is the evidence? The evidence is that I'm seeing God in the Old Testament. God in the New Testament. 
And the enemy there in the Old Testament is still here in the New Testament. And we're waiting for Jesus, but yet forgetting to live. And we're constantly living in fear, waiting on Christ. And I'm going to tell you right now, I don't care how you believe, that is not God's best. To live in fear, waiting on Christ to come back, means basically, like, I've been a hostage to this for many years. I'm waiting on Jesus to come back to spring me out of here. Because I'm getting sick and tired of serving God and doing all this extra stuff. And the crazy thing is, is that we play games. We play games Sunday after Sunday, revival after revival, but we don't really know our true selves. And the crazy thing about it is that ask yourself about Christianity as a whole. Yes, the Ethiopians embraced it. But I want to ask you this, when it comes to white, westernized, American, nationalistic Christianity that was forced on people, do you trust it to save your soul? And everything that is in the Bible, why is it that the slave master is not afraid of going to hell? Why is it that the missionary is not afraid of going to hell? Why is it that the king and the queen and the presidents are not afraid of going to hell? Why is it that the racist pastor is not afraid of going to hell? You wanna know why? Because they know that it's a book about control and they can use it any old kind of way to keep you in bondage. You're afraid that you're not giving enough. You're afraid that if you don't pay your tithes and give this special offering, that you're not going to be blessed. You're afraid that if you don't buy this special miracle potion, that your loved one is not going to be healed. You're afraid that if you don't have enough faith, that you won't get breakthrough. And so you do everything out of fear, desperation, and you are being exploited. And the crazy thing about it is that it even says in the Bible about the dangers of exploiting God's people. Jesus even drove the money changers out of the temple because they were exploiting the people of God. And so I'm telling you right now, you have to begin to know what truth is. It's more than just what you read in scripture. You have to begin to look at history. You have to begin to have a discerning eye to see the symbolism of the Bible. It has examples. It it has lessons. You can take it literal. But at this point right now, I'm more so willing to be to take it figuratively. To take it symbolically because I know that this thing is transferred through many hands. And at this point right now, I don't trust it. Yeah, I said it. I don't trust it to be the total truth because men's hands have handled it. And that's the God knows truth. Men's bloody hands have handled it and we have turned God's book into whatever. Whatever we want it to mean. Whatever we want it to be. So it can be a sword and it can be a scalpel, but a sword and a scalpel can still be used to kill, to cut, to maim, just like it can be used to heal. And so at the end of the day, what I'm telling you right now is that men, you are a vessel. Women, you are a vessel. I'm going to give you 1 Peter 3 to prove the point. 1 Peter 3 and 7 out of the King James Version. Likewise, ye husbands dwell with them according to knowledge. Talking about the wife. Giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered. And so I'm telling you right now, if you're supposed to give her honor as the weaker vessel, this basically means that you were created to be a vessel Unto these type of energies Whether they be good or bad And the choice is yours And so what I was saying about the mad man of Gadara The man that was full of the legion Those devils couldn't kill him Because trust and believe He was already cutting himself with stones They could have very well threw him off a cliff 
But the one thing I want to tell you is that there is something on the inside of a man that will not allow him to be broken, and that is the will. And that has to be surrendered. You can surrender your will to Christ, or you can surrender your will to Satan. And when he gets your will, he automatically gets your submission. You are a slave to him. Just like you can be a slave to God. But the crazy thing that I want to tell you is this. Are you going to be free in God? Or are you going to be free in Satan? Because it's about your freedom. And the one thing I'm going to tell you is that our spirituality is like a prison yard at times. We got all types of stuff to keep us entertained in the prison yard. I'm going to give you the prison yard of church. We got five-fold ministry. And the crazy thing about it is that there's boundaries, the gates. And the crazy thing about it is that we got guards. And if you get too close to the gate, they're going to they gonna put up a shot, a warning shot. And if you get too far out, you're just going to get shot altogether. And so at the end of the day, man, you have to ask yourself, do you want this? Is that the type of life that I want? Because... When you look at certain aspects of Christianity, it is like that. It is about control. It is about fear. Because that is how people have taught it to us. And we've been indoctrinated into fear. I'm telling you, man, we do more stuff being afraid of the devil versus us loving God. And that's the God knows truth. So just like I said on my TikTok... What would the Christian be if there was no hell? What would the Christian be without the devil? Seriously. If that was just God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, would you still serve God? Would you still serve him? Or are you serving him because you are afraid? What type of life is that? And I'm going to read these points. God and Satan need your permission to use you fully as a vessel next point we at times give ourselves unknowingly to different things which cause us to act in ways that are godly or devilish and that's the God knows truth we have acted godly at times and we have acted devilish at times because no man is exempt from sin I don't care who it is. No man is exempt from godliness. So you can be godly at times. But it's all about what you're willing to do at that moment, at that time. You can show men grace. Or you can be the the perfect villain and not show no man mercy. God will use us Faulty and unclean. I'm going to tell you this. Look at David. Look at the life of David. He used him faulty and unclean. That is the reason why he could not build the temple. And God was still with his son Solomon. Even after Solomon went after other gods. Let me go back in here. Just as the devil will use us perceived perfectionists. And morally upstanding and clean people. So God can use a person that's faulty and unclean and the devil can use a a person that is a perceived perfectionist and morally upstanding clean person. Seriously. So it doesn't matter. You can be used by God or, or the devil. It doesn't matter if you're faulty and unclean or you're a perfectionist and morally upright standing clean. It's just like those folks that say, I don't smoke, I don't chew, I don't hang with those that do. Seriously. It's all about what you're willing to give yourself to. And the crazy thing about it is that there are people who sin outwardly and we see that. But then there are the secret sins, the internal sins. And these are the things that you hardly ever see. Certain addictions, certain struggles, certain traumas. You don't see them because they're not visible. Next point, the key is willingness. The Bible says, 
If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. And I'm going to stop right there. The crazy thing about it is that we believe that if this is just about God, then I'm going to be willing and obedient and I'm going to eat the good of that land. That thing can go either way. You can eat of the land, whether it be good or bad, because you're willing. If you be willing and obedient, ye shall eat, whether it be good or bad, of the land and the seeds that are produced from the land, from the soil. I'm telling you, when you look at the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, now you're starting to see. Now you start to wake up. Seriously. Because you can choose But there's a consequence With the choice And so this is my personal opinion It's not revelation My personal opinion I perceive That God and Satan As energies When you begin to look At how the light of God The light of life Produced everything that we see and everything that we see has energy. And when you begin to look at how Satan was cast out of heaven, when you look at the story, when you hear the stories about how Satan is cast out of heaven, even though these are parables and stories, sometimes the symbolism and the, and the actuality of what is written is about somebody else. But we have coined them as the fall of Lucifer. And so when you begin to look at that, how he fell from heaven and fell into the earth, energy is transformed and transferred. And then Jesus saying, I saw Satan fall his lightning out of heaven. And then you begin to look at what the scripture says in Revelation. This is why I believe that God and Satan are energies. Energies who we as people can allow or disallow. Because there has to be a willingness. When you come to salvation, you have to say yes. When you give yourself over to the devil, you have to say yes. So it's about permission. And so I'm telling you as Christians today, don't allow yourself to be scared. But in the same token, choose what type of energy, what type of life, what type of fruit and land that you want to eat off of. Because it's always a choice with us. Choose ye this day whom ye will serve. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. That is choice. And so you have to ask yourself, what am I willing to choose? But the one thing I want to tell you is this. Do not allow yourself to be scared. Because I'm going to give you this final scripture. It says in the book of Revelation, and I'm paraphrasing, that the fearful will have their part in the lake of fire. So if you're doing all of these things out of fear, you're still going to go to hell. You're still going to go to hell ushering. You're still going to go to hell giving. You're still going to go to hell serving. You're still going to go to hell even though you went to church all of these times because your salvation was based on... Off of being afraid of God And there is a difference I think a lot of times man We need to begin to change In Proverbs where it says The fear of the Lord We need to put in there The reverence of God The reverence of the Lord In some translation It does say that But sometimes when people hear that fear It just indoctrinates them To fearing God more To being afraid And I know that there is a good fear and there is a bad fear but the fear I'm talking about right now is bad it's not the fear that you you know here it is you get ready to get in an accident and then you you know you get scared and then you maneuver a certain way to keep from avoiding it that's not it what I'm trying to get you to see is that a lot of times in this system it is about religious control and fear mechanism to make you do whatever the person that is projecting it wants you to do so this is the reason why they have given us the slave Bible, the slave preacher. This is the reason why you're seeing so much corruption in these five full offices, because they're playing off of your fear. 
You up here giving all types of money and doing all types of stuff and allowing pastors to do all types of stuff to you because you are afraid. And you are allowing yourself to be abused and misused. So I want you right now to make up in your mind that it stops right here. And that you're going to create boundaries that are going to keep you safe and that you're not going to live in scarvation. And if it's going to be salvation, then it's going to be because I love God. And God first loved me. It's going to be about that. But this whole thing about hell, this whole thing about the devil, man, we got to we got to begin to not focus on that. Because some of you have an anointing for testifying of the devil. Testifying of his acts and y'all and y'all treat him like he's God. And to some of y'all, he is a God because you talk about him more than you talk about anything else. And then you wonder why he show up. Because you have given him access. And where there's agreement, you have power. His energy with your energy brings about manifestation and expression. And then you wonder why certain things show up in your life. Because you are are ignorant about what you're giving yourself to. You have to begin to take heed to what you hear, to what you speak, to what you put into your mouth, to what you put into your heart. Because death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. You have to also understand that you are transformed by the renewing of your mind. It can be negative or positive. But that is a spiritual concept. And it's not just about being transformed biblically. But being transformed your whole life. Begin to put things that are going to free you from everything that is binding you in your life. If you're being bound in your finances, then get the truth that's going to set you free in your finances. And sometimes that truth ain't in the Bible. And sometimes that truth is not giving your rent money to a prophet who ain't going to give you jack, but just going to keep you waiting. You can't get your money back. Sometimes that truth is you changing up your diet and exercising because you want to see healing come forth. You're going to have to get that truth. So I'm telling you right now, man, be proactive in your faith. Because at the end of the day, if you're not proactive, somebody's going to keep controlling you. And I'm going to tell you, man, the gospel is free. But the experience, you're going to end up paying for. And you could be a slave in church and run around it. And it's nothing, it's nothing more than just a prison yard. Seriously, you ain't getting nothing. You bound because you're afraid to go past certain things, to, to ask questions. And this is what I mean about you as a Christian being a free thinker. You got to begin to allow yourself to explore. And some of you are afraid. You are afraid because all you ever read was the Bible and you just go to church on Sundays and Wednesdays and any other day. And you think that's going to save you. Going to church isn't going to save you. It means that you're just a faithful member. So I'm telling you right now, begin to set yourself free. Because I'm telling you, man, you got to own your salvation just like you own your faith. And so if you want to be free, be free. If you want to be bound, stay bound. Let him that is ignorant be ignorant still. Because trust and believe. There's always going to be victims out here. And you got to be one of those people that are not going to be a victim. And that's the God knows truth. So I'm giving you this to challenge you. But I'm also telling you, man, begin to really look at it. The history of the Bible, the history of the King James, the history of Christianity, the history and how some of these doctrines came forth. Because if it's about 
scaring people into salvation, how long does it last? How long when a person isn't scared anymore because they haven't seen the love of God? How long before it wears off? You know, when people are like, well, okay, I got saved. Where's God going? What's God going to do? Because we hear about what the devil does. So I'm telling you, man, make up your mind how it is going to be. I know some people are going to be like, man, this nigga done lost his mind. No, I haven't. I've been asking a lot of questions. And the crazy thing is, is that now when you hear certain things and certain questions are asked, it forces you to look inwardly. It forces you to look at certain things and ask like, is this what God really is and means? Because I'm going to lie, you know, people can say all up and down every day, all day long. God is sovereign. He can do whatever he wants. And if we believe that, then are you okay with it? When you've been believing God and you watch your loved one die. And then you have to make up in your mind, how am I going to deal with this? Because I prayed, I did this, I did that, and my loved one still died. But God is sovereign. And then the, 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 the stupid excuses that we hear. Oh, God needed another angel. Really? She was the most prepared. Really? Especially if you haven't made reconciliation with that person. It hurts even more. So I'm telling you, man. The one thing that we got to do with Christianity is that we have to make it make sense. Because right now, it don't. It don't make sense to me when I have faith and I do everything according to the scriptures and still lose somebody. It don't make sense when I have faith, that person has faith and I anoint them with oil because it says that the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And they still die. I I don't get it. But God is sovereign. Maybe it's not meant for me to know because we have been okay with that as well. And so at the end of the day, you got to make up in your mind, regardless of how it goes, are you going to serve God? Because I know I have some questions just like you have some questions, but at the end of the day, ask yourself, what type of energy are you going to give yourself to? I want to read this thing again about energy. Energy cannot be created or destroyed, but it can be transferred and transformed. And there are a number of different ways energy can be changed, such as when potential energy becomes kinetic energy or when one object moves another object. So we see this all throughout the Bible in symbolism with God and Satan. Or Lucifer who became Satan. So I'm telling you, man, it's 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 all about energy. What are you going to give yourself to? And at the end of the day, you will reap what you've sown to that energy. Whether it be God or the devil. So I want you guys to be blessed. Follow me on TikTok, but this is going to be the intro into the new season of the Brother Leon Show. Peace. Walk in the truth that makes you free every day. Follow Brother Leon on all social media outlets.